My friends know me as Skeeter, and um, we are in a place I call the center of the middle of nowhere. Actually, we're in the high desert of New Mexico, and I've decided to try to go on my own in this rustic environment. I don't know what the hell I was thinking when I chose to do this. And so many times I've like, I think I've bitten off too much to chew this time, and I don't know what I'm doing here. And then there's other sublime moments where it's really quite worth it. One of the colleges I went to was New Mexico State um, back in the mid-70s and uh, made a fairly good uh, friendship with one of the professors and he invited me to go camping in the Gila. I didn't even know what the Gila wilderness was at the time. So they take me camping in the Gila and they um, exposed me to hot springs and basically I just lost my mind. Uh, I'm from New York City, the Bronx originally and you know, water comes out of faucets with a sink, you know. So hot water bubbling up out of the ground was just no concept in my mind about that at all. So I'm sitting soaking in these, you know, warm pools in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it was nothing. And, you know, for a city boy, it was like, well, this must be Mother Nature at her finest. I, you know, I don't think it gets much better than this. So that's why I fell in love with this rustic outdoor nowhere area. Since we bought the land and we bought cheap land, we bought totally raw land. I mean, there was no road here, there's no telephone poles, there's no water lines, no gas lines, no sewer lines, no electricity. It was just raw land. People come out here to go hunting. I got to chase them away now or they'll be shooting around me. So after you get your, your road cut in and you've got your place leveled out where you're going to build, first thing you need is water. So then you find a well driller to come out here, and now you can tell the well driller to go up this road, and in this spot I'll mark it out for you, put my well in. Next was, for me, going back to the drawing board, saving more money, and buying my solar system. So when I had about eight or ten grand together, I bought the solar system and put it in storage. Then I start saving again. This original structure it was supposed to be a barn. Finances change, things change, you have to adapt. So this became my uh, major uh, primary structure and I've done one addition to it, uh, an additional 400 square feet. 400 square feet is, is fairly comfortable, I think, um, as far as the living space, you know, and I don't know after the next edition is done, is this going to be a bedroom, is this going to be a living room, is this going to be my library. Now that winter and spring is kicking in, these will come down and the rooms will kind of, I want them to flow into each other. I actually found a refrigerator that I could use because the refrigerator's got a pretty heavy load on it and that's one thing about being off the grid. One of your main concerns is your electrical loads. So in the daytime when my pa panels are creating power, I'm able to use a lot of things, you know, power tools and so forth, but at night I don't want to have real heavy loads going unless I have a real strong reserve of batteries. It's a 10.2 uh, cubic foot refrigerator. It's maybe two inches uh, less wide and maybe an inch and a half less tall than your average refrigerator you'd buy at Walmart or Home Depot or whatever. And my water tower is where I had the well put in and the well is actually right outside this wall and this tower is supporting my tank. So my process was keep it simple, stupid. You're going to need some way to get water to what you're going to use. And the way they do it in municipalities is with gravity feed pressure. So if I have a tower, all I got to do is pump the water up to the tower. Then I've got gravity feed pressure. And any time you turn on a faucet, you've got water. Composting toilet this time, since I'm planning on raising the tower, had to be temporarily installed over here. So I'm just doing a tent thing. And here's what a composting toilet looks like. A really simple functional design. Um, you've got this handle which allows you to crank a tub inside so that you can always aerate the compost. And what's happening is once you put your fecal matter in there, what you want to do is add a mixture of wood shavings and peat moss. And this allows the microbes and bacteria to grow in that environment. And as the, the bad ones that we don't like eat 
are getting eaten by the good ones and they break down, it goes from just being fecal waste into what we term as compost, something that's been naturally broken back down and can be returned to nature. I haven't even gotten a stove yet. I'm just propane and a wood burner and, you know, a little stove. Mostly I drink tea. I don't even cook here that much. I'm a bachelor, you know what I mean? So you see what my food stock is, right? Peanut butter, jelly, nuts, you know, cookie, cereal. And, you got a but I've got a microwave, I've got a coffee maker, I've got a fridge, so, you you know, if I really want to, I can cook meals. That's the, one of the early um, uh, control modules for tracking the sun. And it's just got two photocells on either side of that black little pylon there. And the way it was designed originally was so that after the sun went down, and this is facing as far west as it'll go, after another 30 minutes with no sun hitting those sensors up top, then it would go wah, 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 and it would rotate all the way back east and be ready to face the sun for the next morning. Each panel is rated at 48 watts, and these are ancient panels now by their own, or antiquated anyway. Panels now at about the same size would give anywhere from two to practically five times as much power. We've got panels now putting out 200 watts. 48 watt panels are like nothing. So I just threw another temporary structure up here just to house the batteries and my inverter to get them out of the sun. You know, you want to ground your system. You want to have this <laughs> charge controller so that your batteries don't get overcharged or don't get, you know, overdrained. With just this one little, you know, battery bank of four, um, I go three days overcast. With a bank of 12, I should be able to handle like fridge running all the time, music stereo all day, and a five day overcast period. Wow. The maintenance on your batteries, that's, that's crucial. You, they dry out, your cells die, and you gotta go invest in new batteries. But these should last you seven to 10 years, easy. Getting older, you know, the, the party life, the city life, all of that, I've done that. Um, Having privacy, some place to call your own that's all paid off. I don't have to worry about missing a monthly mortgage. I don't have to worry about monthly payments on gas, electricity, water, sewage, all of that. I don't have monthly bills. And most my whole check for whatever job I do is, you know, just disposable income as I choose. I pay for gas for my vehicle and food for me and my cell phone bill, pretty much. I mean, in the United States, we're, we're used to a level of material comfort. You know, you walk into a room, you know, your first, you know, unconscious movement is to go for the light switch. And if you don't find it where you think it is, you stop. You don't go any further. You wait till you find the electricity. Um, we're, we're used to a high level of material comfort. I want that. I just don't want to pay for it for the rest of my life. <laughs> Thank you.